Hi. Hi, Han. Welcome to the stream. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully well. You know, I really should have picked up a... What's it called? Doriani's... What Doriani's? What is it? What's that stupid stick I need? I really should have picked up the upgraded weapon that I needed, because I, I am level 75 now. Which is what has happened since... It's Doriani's Catalyst! Okay. Did I spell Dory's wrong? Oh, no, I just didn't scroll down enough. Cool. Okay, there we go. Hi, Ron! Okay, so we are back in Path of Exile. We have frogs. We are level 75. We have lots of mines. And also we're a skeleton. Kind of. I really do kind of like this outfit. It kind of just came together. That's good. Weapons don't look totally right, but that's okay. That's fine. Everything's fine. I'm going to quickly go pick up a... Better... Staff. No, nope, Scepter. Because I mean to do that. I'm... I've successfully reached the basic version of the build. It is complete. Now I am going to enter the advanced version. What that means is the first thing I'm doing is changing out my weapon. This will be a lot stronger. Give me three blues, will you? Oh yeah, I picked up an Arakali's Fang last night. That was pretty nice. That's gonna sell well. Doc Chalk, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. We are just getting our shit together so that we can start playing. Okay, have the catalyst now. We're doing a bit more damage. Yay! Finally got all my gems worked out. I've got the entire build set up. It is kind of the way that it's supposed to, kind of maybe. Yes, this game is very hard, that is true. <laughs> It is not a simple game to play. And it explains nothing. But that's okay. Okay, so we... What should we set up? So we're just going to get into maps. Uh, we're 75, so we need to keep leveling. Is just it. We definitely need to keep leveling. Okay, so what here? Actually, evade's not going to bother me, so it doesn't matter what, what has evade on it. Can't be stunned is fine. Salt ribbons have the most... 
creatures, so I guess I'll keep the quant on that. I think this is actually just kind of fine the way it is. I don't really want to put crit damage on ranged creatures, but I can put them on large creatures instead. That's easier to hit. Oh, and uh, because it's kind of a ritual. Frogs! Wait, who should I replace with frogs? Who do I not like? Let's replace the dust scramblers with frogs. We are going to have a bunch of frogs. Hmm. Fractured items. Swap that out for fractured items. We'll have some synthites. And swap those. Will you be able to handle the sadness of the fact that I, I am in fact going to be blowing them up? Because <laughs> they're... They might be harmless, but they are still destructible. They will die. Okay. I believe in you. Okay. I'm still kind of trying to learn how the embers work. So they replace the monster that you're going to be fighting, but not the modifier. So you can kind of pair monsters up with modifiers that you like. Okay, so here's some synthites, which will have fractured items, of which I'm going to pick up a lot. Uh, oh, that's an echoing shrine. Do I want that? That might actually be bad for me. It's going to repeat on my spells. I don't really want it to repeat my spells. I don't have any spells that benefit from repeating. I guess unless I want to just dash farther. And mines aren't going to repeat. Oh, yep. Yeah. I immediately forgot that my dash is repeated. I'm not really liking this build. It's very... It's very simple. It doesn't really require... a lot of anything. <laughs> it, which will matter later on a lot more, because we'll be able to really push it. Try, try the really hard content. And this build is capable of going pretty far. So far, I haven't really felt like I'm in much danger, even when I'm face tanking things that are buffed by the lantern. And sure, it's only tier 4, but like... Usually, you're at least somewhat phased by this stuff. But I really am not. What is my DPS now? That's a good question. Um... Hmm. Is there any way that I can actually simulate that? I mean, glancing at the POB.
That's a hard question. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm probably sitting somewhere under 3 million DPS. No, my... No. My skills are... My gems are still low level. I'm going to tentatively say I'm around 2 million. Two, two and a half, maybe. Which is why my character is just so comfortable to play at this level. It's going to become a problem eventually, but that's that's okay because I have a lot of a lot of ways of dealing with that problem. The unfortunate reality is there's no effective way in game to gauge your DPS. Like, I, if you look here, there is an average damage number there at like in the top middle what that means i have no idea <laughs> like i don't really know i i don't know what that means in relation to anything basically there is i mean that's the tooltip dps there which isn't even technically right because there is so many projectiles from each mine that it's not counting because there's going to be an average of 15 projectiles per throw. So I don't really know what that damage is supposed to be, because that's certainly not per hit. Because my per hit DPS is should be sitting somewhere around 40 or 50,000 per projectile. Minimum. The basic version of the build, when it's like fully set up with a level 90 tree and a, like fully leveled gems sits at 4.5 million so i don't know that that is my that is my safe answer is i don't really know what my dps is i wish there was i wish the functionality that path of building gave was in any way inside the game No. Nothing really good. Unfortunately, the only stats in game that actually are accurate really would be the chance to hit. Stats should be accurate. The chance to cause ailments should be accurate. I think the art of physical damage reduction is accurate. The evasion rating is not. The energy shield is accurate. The recharges are accurate. The spell suppression chance is not accurate. The resistances are accurate. Block can be accurate. Sun avoidance can be accurate. Movement speed's accurate. Anything else here? Everything on the miscellaneous page is probably accurate. Well, except for the fact that I have charges at all times while I'm fighting, and that's not shown here either, so... Because <laughs> all of this is without charges which like this is what's known as out of combat stats which is kind of useless because when you're in combat you want to know your in combat stats and your in combat stats will matter based on a whole lot of different factors like when i hit things i gain inspiration charges and i gain frenzy charges and i gain power charges, and they're all like a pretty big deal 
when I ignite things, my snow forge activates and decreases their elemental resistances. When I unnerve things, they're unnerved, so they take more spell damage. Like, it doesn't take any, th any variables into effect. It's just, like, very incomplete raw data, basically. Which is more or less useless. Some of the data that I said is incorrect can be correct at times, but it's not reliably correct, so that doesn't count. I think I've cleared this area more or less. Like, one of the things that I'm going to point to specifically is evasion writing here. So my chance to evade is not 69%. Because, first of all, well, okay, I don't have my flasks set up properly yet, but I will have my jade flask be turning on and off. I'm going to pause music so it's easier to do this. My jade flask will be turning on and off, which will be changing my, my evasion rating will be going up and down. Depending whether I've been hit in the last four seconds, my evasion rating will be going up or down. Where's the other one? Um... Oh yes, blind. Blind is a big deal. Because when something's blinded, and something is always blinded, when I hit it, when it's near me, just any of that... Uh, it does, it has less evasion rating, and it has less chance, less accuracy, which means that it has less chance to hit me. So I effectively have more evasion rating when something is blinded, but it doesn't mark the fact that things are blinded when it, cons when it calculates your chance to evade. It doesn't, because otherwise my chance to evade would be higher than that. My chance to evade... Let's see what's, what it should be. Hmm. Is it because I have the Born in Shadows active? Maybe... If I'm to if I'm to guess very roughly, I'm going to say that my chance to evade is probably sitting around seventy six percent right now, uh, just naturally with blind. Then if I've been hit, I get another ten percent more chance to evade. Been hit by an attack recently. There we go, which probably brings it up closer to eighty. Percent. And what am I forgetting? Wind Dancer, Blind. Oh, and also my flask when they turn on. I mean, sixty nine percent, seventy six percent. So I also have the fluctuating, like, extra 5-ish percent. Which, yet again, changes things. And with Path of Building, it assumes you're in combat at all times. So it assumes that if you set that you have buffs, that those buffs are being maintained regularly. Which is also why you can cheat at Path of Building DPS really, really easily. And increase your DPS in ways that just are not accurate. Because, like, just checking one box by saying, like, oh yeah, no, I totally can reliably have these charges, can mean that your build just it seems way stronger than it actually is. I know for sure with this build, I always have maximum frenzy and power charges. That does not change. Because I gain charges, um, based on my charge mind support here. So... 
I have a 22% chance when a mine detonates with an enemy targeted, and if it's near something, it's always targeting something. It doesn't even need to hit it. It just needs to have targeted it. Then that will give me a chance at gaining a frenzy charge. So one in five mines that I activate will give me a frenzy charge on average. And a frenzy charge and a power charge. And every throw is five mines. And friends and charges in general last an amount of time that I can't remember. My brain keeps saying four seconds. That doesn't sound right. Do I have charge duration here? No. I think it's ten seconds. So if I throw four sets of mines in ten seconds, then I can maintain maximum uh, maximum charges. And if I'm playing this right, I will be throwing a lot more than four sets. Because one, two, three, four. And that's all I need to do for ten seconds to maintain my charges. So I know for sure that I will have those. Yeah, the difference between in combat and out of combat DPS is notable. Which is why the path of building method of showing you things is useful and the path of exile base method is useless. Which is sad because I would like the game to actually be able to tell you when you are doing something well. Because... I don't. I mean, I've, pl I've I'm coming up on five thousand hours. I still have no idea what average DPS means. Like, I have no frame of reference what that could possibly mean. Because, like, I've had tooltip DPS that sits. Like, like, look at this. My flame dash is fifty seven hundred DPS. My pyre, my pyroclast mine of sabotage, is seventeen hundred. Average damage, whatever that means. Let's assume that's average damage per hit. So if I can throw... One, one thousand, two... If I can throw about one and a half F sets per mine, per uh, second, then let's say that's about... I'll just be generous and say that's eight mines you can get out. Eight mines, that would be... Eight. Let's actually just do this in math in the calculator because that would make this so much. That would make more sense. Okay, so that would this would suggest. Wait, no, times three projectiles. This would suggest that I have forty thousand DPS. I don't. That's bullshit. <laughs> But this would suggest that I have 40,000 damage a second. When it's closer to 2 million. So I don't know what metric they could possibly be attempting to use. I, I don't even want to try to speculate because of how complicated that would be. But as far as I can tell, just based on the tooltip here, my flame dash is about on average... It's... Based on this, my flame dot should be doing about a third of the damage ish that the pyroclast mines are doing per second. Which is not true. Cuz if let's say let's say I'm I'm doing half the DPS I'm supposed to do with the basic gear, which is 2.2 million is is half. If I look at my flame dash About the building, which I'm not showing you. It is suggesting it is 63,000 damage instead of 2.2 million damage. That is, that is the difference between the two. Supposedly, that's the amount that that's worth, that's doing. And I, I believe Path of Building, 62,000 is... I mean, that's not unreasonable for a level 90 who's specced into fire damage with spell and elemental damage. That makes some sense. I mean, it's not, it's almost nothing, but, 
I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's that's just my rant about the system not being useful. Is it's just it's just not useful. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know how else to add add to that. It's just not useful. It is a bad system that serves no purpose. Oh boy, this this is busy. Okay. Who has the highest density? Probably you two. Hmm. What if it'd be a more common pack? I don't want to add more physical damage to... Or I don't want to add more fire damage to the fire damage skeletons. Puncture's physical damage, so it would benefit from that too. The Lynxes don't have much damage to them, so I'm going to give them that, so it, which ups their damage, which is fine. Uh, let's see. If I leave the and boosted damage on them, at least it won't be on the ranged things. That's fine. Yeah, this will work. Okay, let's actually turn the music back on. Okay. There's only a tier two. Tier three? I don't pay enough attention. It'll be simple. And honestly, I just need to go through a bunch of basic maps to just to finish them off. Level up and stuff, because I'm about to level oh. About to level right about yeah. Yay. Well, that was weird. Put a lag there. Basic six socket. Oh no, I haven't had chat on screen at all. Oops. There, now you can talk. I have ungagged you. I haven't done any of the ice stuff yet. I probably should, because the rogues markers are actually kind of worth it, for money-wise, at least early in the league. Okay, these guys can actually be kind of scary sometimes. Yeah, yeah, this build is a bit powerful. Usually I try to be at least somewhat careful with them, because they do hit fairly hard, but no. I mean, you saw how dangerous that was for me. Not very. An all flame to add rogue exiles. Interesting. I am not going to use that because I hate rogue exiles.
Realm Shaper. So many torment term spirits. I'm intentionally ignoring the tormented spirits instead of killing them, because they have a chance to touch things or possess them, and that means that they will get the benefit of whatever the spirit is. So I'd rather have them running around buffing things than maybe get some loot from them, because like technically they can drop things if you kill them, but I don't think I've ever seen them drop anything that's even remotely decent. Why does that have a boar around it? Yeah, that one just dropped, like, crappy rare stuff. That's why I don't kill them. Yeah, touch all those, please. Thank you. For reference, for those who aren't familiar, touched is, act is like, the actual term that they use in-game. Uh, minions can become touched, and... Uh, rares, their boss, bosses of the pack can become possessed. I guess because if they possessed really weak stuff, they would just die immediately, and the effects of the spirit would be nothing, really. Slowly working my way over to get Huck. Which is yet another reason why I should actually do some high stuff soon. So that I can reach Huck. Huck is very nice. I mean, who doesn't want to have an extra defensive aura for free? Hmm. What should I spend my points on? You know what, I'm going to take away from my evasion writing, actually. I will put these points back, but for now... I have enough. This. Yeah, it's an extra 300 health. That's that's more than worth it. I have a little bit of health currently reserved for clarity over here. Man, the the gem, the pop up for it is like perfectly aligned with where my mic is, so I can read everything from cooldown time down, but exactly where it says reservation. And, like, directly above that, I can't see because of my mic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have my Clarity on Arrogance here, which is what the 153 Reserved Life is. I have my Righteous Fire here for if I need it. My Flame Dash and Flame Ability on Faster Casting. My Steel Skin and Detonate Mines on Automation. My Grace, Skitter Bots, and Precision all active here. For my mana auras. I just have charged mine to support here just so that I can level it. And then we finally have our Cast Wind Sun set up with Phase Run and Frost Shield for inspiration. Or with inspiration to reduce their cost. Really want to level that up so that they keep decreasing in cost. 41 for Frost Shield. Phase Run's at 10 mana. Okay. Okay, what have I not done? None. Give me something new, please. No. Oh. Well, at least they're new. Also, I could snag some of these. Iceberg. Boundary. Fields. 
Primordial Pool, Phantasmagoria, Waterways. I need all of those. That actually, that saves me a lot of time. Okay, so what of these actually matters to me? More magic monsters is fine. Action speed can't be reduced is fine. Taunted's fine. Can't be taunted's fine. Spell suppression is annoying, but whatever. Unique bosses are possessed can be scary at higher levels, but not here. And chance to gain a frenzy charge is scary. I'm going to use my wonderful hotkey thingy. What's this thing called? Awaken Pew we trade to set which of these are dangerous modifiers. Cool. There's like a uh, map scan thing where you can scan what your maps are, what your map's going to be. And, uh, like, scan all the modifiers on it, and you can list which modifiers are dangerous and which aren't. Okay. Well, the beasts don't have any projectiles, so they can get additional projectiles. I'll give them priest. Priest resistance is fine. You know what? Actually, Burning Skeletons have low max life, so I'm going to give that to them. And I'm going to give resistances to the dogs. Because they're harder to hit in general, and this will protect them more. Oh, this has increased pack size. Hmm. Put the chance to drop more jeweler's orbs on the increased packs as one. Because that's per that's for all of them. Rather than just the pack leader. I feel like the pack size has increased for more things than just that. They might have tweaked the pack size. Wait, what's that? Oh. The corpse to pick up thing on the map looks a lot like the harvest garden symbol. That is a giant blue pack. I love the mob density in this. So nice. This is the League of AoE Builds. Not that there ever has been a league where AoE is bad, really. Now oh, maybe there has been. I don't know. I can't think of one, though. No, get back here. You rude little asshole. There we go. <laughs> Damn golems. I hate the mobs that run away. They're so annoying. Most things chase you. Some things do not, and that those ones suck. Smuggler's Cash. Eh. Ooh, that's a special haunted. Haunted by something Freesha.
I should actually learn the lore of this game someday. Like, I, I have a notable amount of lore knowledge just by virtue of I've played this game for so long, but... I don't know, like... I recognize Frisha as a last name because of the crown of Frisha. And if they were royalty, they were probably part of the Eternal Kingdom. That's about as far as I can go. Special new ritual scarab. That's worth anything. Man, this is a big map. This is what we've already done. Still so much more. I'm trying not to be, but I am a bit low energy right now. I wish that weren't the case. But I've had a busy day. Busy doing work-related stuff that is likely to change my schedule in the near future. Which means it will change my streaming schedule, unfortunately. Probably want it to, but it probably will change it. I will have to redo my streaming schedule after that point, though. Figure out what other people are doing first before I can make my changes. I need to find a way to better be able to make content while dealing with an increased workload, because my workload's going to be going up a lot in the next several weeks, whether I want it to or not. And I'm going to need to handle that, because I want to still be able to make cool videos and stuff. I don't want to stop making cool videos because I have other work that I'm also working on. Hmm. I guess I could, uh, uh, I guess I could make the packs that are bigger rares. Those ones have increased rarity, which is nice. Rarity of items dropped. Though rarity doesn't do very much, so I don't think it matters. Increased life granted to pack members on death. I'll put that on the reduced pack size one. I can have evade chance because I don't do attacks. Hmm. I think the cold damage can be least useful for the arachnids. Yay, stuff.
Honestly, I'm really enjoying this league. I don't know if it seems like that, but I've honest, I really am enjoying this league. It's been a lot of fun so far, getting to, getting used to the uh, mechanic. I have to say, it's probably one of the better design mechanics as far as understanding it goes, like out of the gate. It's the most intuitive mechanic, or not the most intuitive, but like, it's certainly one of the more intuitive ones I've encountered so far. Plus, it is enjoyable being able to take my knowledge of what these monsters actually do, because I'm, I'm just familiar with interacting with them, and be able to apply that to what buffs or debuffs I give them, because I know which monsters can or can't use a particular ability. So, if I buff abilities that they don't have, then those buffs do nothing. But they still increase my... the stuff that I get. Because you have to accept the buffs that the Lantern's giving you, in addition with, uh... Well, okay, I guess you could say debuffs, technically. You have to accept the debuffs it gives you, because that's just how it works. But there are ways to make it easier. No, no, Stonebeak, no, no. I hate that thing. It's one of like three things in the game that uses pin down, which is a complete immobilization skill. Oh, I unlock fortune favors. Complete immobilization skills are very rare and very obnoxious, which is why almost no monsters have them. I mean, freeze, freeze skills exist, but there's a lot of counterplay for those. Well, there is no counterplay for pin down, really, except for uh, things that protect your action speed from being reduced. Which are much rarer. It's always so funny reading when people say T for T. Because it means thanks for trade. Uh, in path. Which is understandable. Uh... Now, see, the thing is that, think a trans person, I know that T for T has a different meaning in different parts of the internet. In other parts of the internet, it means trans person for trans person. So I giggle when I see it, because it's just like, it's because in my brain, I interpret it kind of like, of, I interpret it kind of as like, hey, I'm gay for you, when really what they're saying is thanks for trading with me. <laughs> Oh, uh, which is fun. Hmm. Oh my gosh, there's, there's so many things here. Uh, what do... Uh, what do I do? Okay, um... Oh, I'm going to give increased crit chance to the uh to the crabs. They're very slow.
So, it'll be hard for them to crit me if they can't catch me. Oh no. Oh no. Not gardens. I hate gardens. <laughs> it's just really annoying. It's the outdoor version of dungeon, and I hate dungeon. <laughs> Because there's just so many walls, and so few of them you can actually teleport over or get around. And I hate mazes, in general, in real life and in games. Is there any actual, like, skill to navigating a maze? I'm not really sure if there is. Because I like things that actually require skill, and there doesn't seem to be any way to counterplay a maze. Besides just stick to, the, to a particular wall, or... Or stick to a particular wall. I can't actually think of any other counterplay to a maze. Just as a mechanic. Which feels boring, because it feels like you're just guessing. That's not... Guessing is not skill-based, usually. Not to be confused with a hypothesis, which is different. What was that? What was that ability? There was a red swirly thing, and it looked like one of the Elva things. Corrupting Tempest. Oh, no, that's the thing that makes items corrupted. No, don't want. If I stand in the spot, it will make it so that I have a buff that corrupts items that I get, which I don't want. That sounds annoying. The fact that you can identify things that are corrupted now, though, is really nice. <laughs> I really like that. It was really annoying before. No! Items you find are corrupted, yeah. Okay. Just don't... Don't... Uh, don't corrupt my stuff. I like it not corrupted. I like my items like I like my coffee, uncorrupted. By evil. <laughs> Frost made gemlings. Ooh, quality gems. I have heard the gemlings are scary. Ooh. Both will cultists! Well, well, cultists are also scary. Those I have seen already. The good thing that I'm that this build is actually going to have chaos res because oh boy, do I not want to deal with wildwood cultists without chaos res? That sounds like a disaster. Oh shoot, I stepped on the abyss. Get back here. 
Ah. No, not detonated. Not detonated. No. Bad crab skeleton thing. I like that you can pick what you buff to in this. That was one thing about Affliction I did not like, was that... And I didn't really understand this at the time, but... It's, it's, it sucks when you're just buffing everything indiscriminately, because some things become... Like, reasonable and interesting challenges, and other things just become uncontrollable... Shitstorms. That's not fun. Like, you give normal monsters a buff that increases their crit chance in exchange for increasing their chance to drop currency. Too many rares on my screen. Sure, that's fine for a normal mob. You do that to a Soul Eater mob? That's just gonna eat your portals. No, we're not doing that. Oh, where am I going now? I haven't planned this. <laughs> hmm. I'm pretty decent against expedition stuff right now. I should be good against expedition, legion, and breach. I shouldn't have any issues with harvest. Abyss might be a problem. I mean, I definitely want rogues markers. Liam's good. Uh, don't. Mm. I feel kind of like I'm going to turn off Ultimatum's Blight and Ritual. None of them really benefit me, I don't think. Not, not this build, at least. Wait, no. I'm going to go this way. Because I want to get Mighty Hunter to get Einhar Remains in your map. Since that's a cheap way of buffing yourself, is by having Einhar. More health. Also, the frag the Scarab page has become crazy. <laughs> like, is it bad? Not really, it's just crazy looking. Nation, 1C. And the influencing ones are still not expensive. No, they're not. Betrayal. Betrayal's ex obscenely cheap. Photographers. Cheap. Am ambush. Ambushes, ambush gears are actually expensive. They're like 5C a piece, it looks like. Even for the basic ones. I don't know if there is such a thing as basic scarabs anymore. Okay, we're going to take a short break from mapping. And we are going to go get ourselves Huck. We're going to get Hucked up. Uh, Tibbs introduces you to Huck, so I need to go with him.
I mean, I'll probably go with Curse just to get this out of my inventory, but... Right. Okay. He had to tell me that he really did not like this person. Also, what is this shit? What is this shit in, in town? Why is this allowed in town? Like, they specifically turn off the skills in town so that this shit isn't allowed. This is why we have no frames in town, ever. That is a huge problem this league. Like, it was bad last league. It's slightly worse than last league, so it's bad plus ultra. <laughs> Not a fan. Oh wait, I need to turn... Set myself to the basic filter so that I'm seeing... Basic drops for... For... Come on. Brain work. Basic drops for high skier. That's the word I'm looking for. Because I need a... Piece of high skier. A weapon for Huck. So that I can give him an aura. Ideally, one of the melee ones, the sharpening stones. I don't know what I'm going to give him. I can give him haste so that I move faster when mapping. That's always good. The other option is Determination, or Anger, or Zealotry. Ooh. Nice, Chaos. It's unfortunate that I don't think mine builds can benefit from Zealotry making Consecrated Ground. I don't think. Ah. Uh. How dare you lock me in here? Stop attacking my karst! Ooh, high scare. Going back to the weird microtransactions in town thing, they have put themselves in a really bad scenario because they're actively slowing down their game in towns as well as in parties, which is dangerous to do because it's upping the system requirements. And they can't really reverse that fact and change the microtransactions they've already sold because, theoretically, they might have to do refunds for them. And they might not be able to easily do that or want to do that. So it might kind of just be set, like, set that way and just fucked in general. As I know many people have said before, it'd be really nice to have an option to turn off other people's microtransactions so that you can see your own shit, but you can't see other people's shit. Because I don't want to see other people's pets wandering around. I don't want to see their random shit smashing the ground and so on. Like, that's just so not useful to, to like, any of my gameplay.
all of this goes in here. Okay, who do I have? Uh, first, you're getting a cloak. Okay, Tibbs, I need to do something with you. First, didn't introduce me to anyone. I just noticed that. Maybe it's because it was a quest thing. I'm gonna take these shitty low-level contracts. I'm gonna see if I can basically destroy these in exchange for getting the new people. Because uh, he's gonna introduce me to Lena? No. Is this not high enough level? Might be. Do I have... Who's perception? Is Karth perception? Karth is perception. Do I need something higher level for him to introduce me to someone? So does he can introduce me to someone? No, he can. I don't... I don't have Talina, right? No, I definitely do not. Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay. I didn't realize it was Karst that gives you Huck. Okay. Well, I've Huck now. Any other trashy currents? currency? No, not currency. Any trashy contracts? Trap disarm one. Put these. Engineering, engineering, trap disarm. That's not useful. Oh, no, I can do an engineering contract with Huck. That will give me... Niles! Thank you. Uh, Vindiri's gonna have trap disarmament. And there's no point doing something with Isla, I don't think. Pretty sure Isla does not give you anyone. She doesn't know anyone because she's always in her lap. <laughs> yeah, no, she doesn't. Okay, so... Huck introduced Niles. Niles knows counter-thaumaturgy and deception. I'm not wasting a deception contract, so... Do I have a counter-thaumaturgy contract? Yes, I do. This one I will actually do. He will introduce me to... Findiri! Cool. Ah, it's the rat place. Give me minions to fight. Rats! Hundreds of rats! My favorite. You want to know what to get me for Christmas? Hundreds of rats. Did I get the rats from here? Didn't. Good for XP. Should I be opening anything? Uh, yeah, I should have opened the small chest, because... The other ones suck. Rats. Hundreds of rats. Uh, 
Rats are very cute. If they were not fantasy rats, I would be upset about killing them. But they are just fantasy rats, so... I have no remorse for JPEGs. Rats! That was a tanky rare. Ooh, chromes. Eight chromes, that's nice. That's over chaos worth. I think it's two chaos worth, actually. For a second, my brain was like, man, I always love this map. I'm, I'm happy that they made it into a map and not just in heist. And I'm like, wait a minute, no, I'm in heist. <laughs> I mean, it does exist as a map, but I guess I'm just tired. <laughs> oh, fuck. I wasn't paying attention. Wasn't paying attention. No. No! No! Niles, quick! Quick, do the thing, Niles! Open the damn thing! Okay. I made it in time. I almost didn't. Oh, rats. Oh, rats. Man, why are some of these rares so tanky? Sure, now I'll open that up for me, will you? Why not? I like free shit. Where did that rare go? Oh, we teleported. Was that lag teleporting or like intentional teleporting? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, all of you need to stop attacking me for a second. I am doing inventory management. You need to wait. Oh no, I need more inventory than this. Shoot. Hmm. Or the ring, take the orb of unmaking. I'm attacking me for a second. I have things I'm doing. I swear I never deactivate those, it's just not worth the time. Hexproof proximity shield. Wow, that was. A rare that would have really sucked for some people. I'm very happy that this build is able to do it just fine. There are very few modifiers that this build struggles with. Can't regen is one of them. But most people struggle with can't regen. Or reduced regen, both suck. X-proof is annoying, but it's not a problem. Can't inflict exposure is annoying, but it's not a problem. Generally, most modifiers are just annoying, but not problems. Okay, and... Vendiri, not yes, Vendiri, and you will introduce me to Diana, which will be one of the last people, and then the last two after that, Talina and the other person, 
who I forget the name of, will be from Tibbs. So I need a Tibbs contract and a Talina contract. Demo one would be good. I think Talina can do Deception. These are really shitty contracts. I'm not going to bother doing them. Okay, so Tibbs to get Talina. And Talina. And finally, Talina to unlock... Wait, what? No. Oh, shoot. Talina, what do you do? Uh, Nanette. Talina unlocks Nanette. That's who it is. Agility, lockpicking, trap disarmament. Lockpicking. Let's see. Uh, sure. I don't really want to do the level 67 ones, because you can't get blueprint reveals from them. So it's not really worth the time. Okay, that's in that. That brings me to online people. Yay. Hmm, what do I need now? Oh, I guess I could take Evasion for Frenzy Charge. That'd be good. That's an extra... few Evasion. Wait, no. I should take the dex note here so I can get my other frenzy charge. That will give me my second frenzy charge. No, that'll bring give, like, give me frenzy charge four, and this will give me frenzy charge five. Okay. Hello, everyone. Nat. Yana. Deary. Niles. Yeah. Fuck. And Talina. Do I have any, like, good contracts? I have, I have a priceless. That's nice. Don't have a Demolition 2 yet, though. High value. Not even a precious? Nope. Okay, so I guess that's going to be one of my best bets. What can I do to up... Do I have a demo one? I need a demolition one. That's... Dem okay, that is demolition two. Okay. Hmm. Actually, do I have any demo one blueprints, maybe? I do have a demo one blueprint. I need trap two, which would be Vendiri. Probably. Trap, I need trap one then. No. I have everything to do that, but that's not actually what I'm looking for. One upgrade demo. Oh, I could do this one. This gives me demolition and trap disarmament.
Okay. Can I take a 12% cold res hit? Yes, I can easily. Ignite does nothing to me. AoE's not too big of an issue. Poison's fine. Okay. I can take the hit from that then. Okay, so, what should I be doing right now? Yeah, I'll do the smugglers down. Okay, so do I have what it takes? Do I have enough? I don't think, I wouldn't have any blueprint reveals yet, I don't think. I don't know if I need them either. I have one with Niles, two with Kano. Hmm. 2600 worth one div card section. I don't know if it is. I think I might just run this as is. I mean, I can get as low as 2400, but that's still not good. Okay, how much are these right now? I'm sitting about 450 each. That's about 6C I need to make in return. Plus whatever the whatever you would price the actual reveal cost at. Which I guess probably a 5 or 10C maybe. I don't know because of time investment. I want the Legion one, actually. I think it's really worth it. I'll do one. Hmm. Can I get 2C out of this? Depends what Legion's giving this league. If I can get a single Resonator out of this, it's worth it. I don't trust Legion to be useful. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I revealed something that was Brute Force 2, and now I can't do anything. Now I can't do the contract or the blueprint, unless I have a Brute Force to do. I need a Brute Force 1. Those are just demo, yeah. Okay, maybe I do have to do a 67. Hmm. Hmm. I'll hold on to that for now until I'm ready to be able to do it. This one isn't very hard. Yeah, that's all doable. Okay. I'm not going to bother revealing anything. I don't think it's worth it. I'm mainly doing it for just the reward at the end. And also for XP. Okay, that will get me a level 3 counter, Thom. I can get level 2 luck. Luck, block picking, and bring someone else along. I guess Nanette. Actually, no. I want Jana for things. I want her to level up because then I can, I can have more 
options for the contracts she can run to trigger her special discounted blueprint reveals. I have 25% less alert level. Okay, but I have four currency chests to open, so I have to be careful. Give me some heist gear, will you? I need some. I have one piece of heist gear across all of my rogues. If it weren't for the fact that removing heist gear would uh, remove auras from your rogues, I would definitely say I don't. I don't think we need heist gear. Like it would be nicer to just have your your characters gain become better at things as they level up. It's clear there's less convoluted shit. No more having to pick random heist gear up. It's just it just makes everything easier. I think it's a system worth simplifying. Finders. It's not, I don't know if it's perfect sustain, but I can more or less sustain my mana for, like, a really long-ass time. You know, I actually don't need a mana flask if I'm, if my mana's this good. Instead, what I should be doing is... Putting increased effect on Rocket and putting that on my right click instead. Or not right click, on my uh, my mouse button, which is the Mana Blast currently. Okay, oh, Replica Bitter Dream, that's probably my pick. Though. Though, 15 regrets is really good. I'll have to check what the Replica Bitter Dream is sitting at. Replica Bitter Dream is sitting at... Hmm... How many of these are real? That's probably bullshit. Probably 9C. So the regrets would be worth more, I think. Regrets are worth... About 0.8. So the orbs of regret would be worth more than the replica bitter dream. Uh, 15 orbs should be worth, like, 12, at least. Maybe 11. I don't know, I'm not actually doing the, the mental math. Guessing. Yeah, you brooch. Not really what I need, but... Well, no, I do need it. Not the piece of gear that I'm looking for the most, but it is nice to have. Because it does increase rarity of items dropped.
Which does mean more rare gear drops, which actually is better when I'm looking for heist gear. There we go. I mean, this, this build's so tanky, because I just get to wade through things. I just need to change my setup with uh, my flasks. Plus, not needing a mana flask has some really big benefits. <laughs> Also, what was that? That was a Carnage Heart and the Reverse Knockback Gloves, whatever they're called. Carnage Heart's worth having. I don't think either of them are worth anything, though. Not unless I get a Corruption on the Reverse Knockback Gloves. I actually use my flasks because they're not automated yet, so I need to actually click the button. I'm just very bad at remembering that. It's something I've always struggled with, which is why the advent of automatic flasks was so important to me. Yay, everyone leveled up. Okay. Give me something good. Chance to duplicate map currency and map fragments and increase job speed. That is really good. Uh, who's going? Who am I going to bring everywhere? Probably Karst. Because of the alert level reduction, it's just irreplaceable. Empire's Grasp, that's what they're called. Oh, it's well rolled, too. Not well enough for it to matter. Yeah, still not good enough. Boom. Damn it. <laughs> Let's try. Maybe? That's probably worth a couple. See, I should keep it. Oh, that's a really badly rolled Carnage Heart, but it is still good for leveling. Reminder to everyone, that if you're enjoying the content, to uh, subscribe to the Black Cat, at Black Cat Streams channel to watch the VODs and or the at Black Cat Studio channel to watch the highlights that I post. I post two VODs a week, and on average, and five videos a week highlights. Shorts or other videos. And also follow the Twitch channel if you're enjoying. Thank you. There'll be lots of good content. Hey, wasn't there a... Blueprint we couldn't do because of trap. I love my trap disarmament. I love my counter thumb, and I read that. I, just, I read two words, and I'm like, oh, it's 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 the thing. <laughs> it's not the thing. Okay, I need to go get more more contracts, which means going mapping. Not that that's a bad thing. Hmm. 
No, I'm gonna get something to drink really quickly, and then I will be right back. So my, cause just, just cause my throat's feeling a bit scratchy. Much better. Oh, I love iced tea. Reduced effective non-curse auras actually is one of the more dangerous things for me, being that I have a lot of auras. That enough to re-roll it though. Hmm. At this level, no. At higher levels, probably. Or I go. Charge recovery, increased effect. There we go. Yeah, I get to have a uh, phasing flask now. That makes me happy. Yeah, I'm going to have a uh, rot gut of frogs instead of a rock gut of phasing. Instead of quartz, quartz frogs. What are my item levels on these? Oh god, my item levels on these are all below 70. Uh. At least add a modifier to them. Give me something. Here, well, that's decent, because I get flash charges on... It, and that'll benefit my build, even if the rest of it's not that amazing. Okay, iceberg. The berg. Ooh, increase XP. I like that. Increased X piss. I, I don't know. Sometimes I say things and I just... I question where they came from. And then it saddens me. These don't have much life. I think that'll be the best bet.
I need to find out the range on the embers. Like, because there's only a certain level range of that the embers can be done with. Like, can I level 70 ember be used on a level 75 map or a level 80 map? Like, how far does it go? I would check, but I'm grooving right now, so. Actually, let's shift the music. Let's go with the outer tones dubstep and trap mix. No. That's not how much that is. It's not that I care so much about 1C. I just don't like it when I feel like people are undercutting me and hoping that I won't notice. Someone was like, hey, I only have 8C. Could you do 8C? Then I would, would be okay with it. Especially since it's an item that they'll be making money off of and not like a gear piece. That's different. Okay, so what am I... I think it's the... Cold Hounds that give extra XP for me right now. Yeah. Cold Hounds give extra XP, the Spiders give extra stuff. Extra food for my pretties. No, extra drops, that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes I wish my brain would be better at remembering the actual thing and not just coming up with strange shit to say instead. <laughs> What was all that? Oh, I think the spiders were exploding into parasites, that was why. Hey! What? There was a frog just floating in midair for a second. From the, uh, rocket flask. That's interesting. Makes me want to see if I can... ...do that again. Hmm.
Give me XP. Nom 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 nom. I just... <laughs> I keep forgetting uh, ing, that I automatically hit my my mana flask. Or what was usually my mana flask slot. Like, my brain, my brain to do that, so... Now I just automatically up, like, activate it regularly. Let's see if I can eject these frogs from the earth. Okay. And, oh, they can go out of bounds of their own will. Interesting. Okay, so they can't be shot out of bounds, but they can move out of bounds. Yeah, see, right there. That one's just floating in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Ah, oh, this game is quirky. Oh, actually... I forgot to add something. I just adding that. Okay, cool. Ready again. Just pen shock. Has speed. Chaos damage immunity. Do I even do chaos damage? I don't think so. Nope. Ah, colon fire damage immunity. I swear this thing reads what your build can do and just adds remnants that specifically can fuck you up if you're not paying attention. Which is annoying. I don't feel like adding modifiers that can make monsters immune to all of your attacks is a good idea. I don't know. To me, just something something about me suggests that the counterplay to not dealing any damage because you can't deal damage is dying. <laughs> Doesn't feel very useful. Here, I can block... I can block cold damage. I have to do a lot less cold damage than fire. That's only the last one anyways. Yeah, I killed most of the things before it even got there. Who is this for? This is for Gwen. Eh. She's not that useful these days. At least I don't find her to be. XP. Nom 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 nom.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know the pack sizes are increased this league. It is... It's just so weird feeling. Like, I like it, it's just... I'm used to... When there's that large a pack of me just getting immediately murdered. So... In my mind, I'm like, oh no! As soon as I see a large pack. But it's fun, because I can blow them up. Oh, no, you don't. I love, I love the rock constructs because they just die so quickly. And they never get to get up before that point. They're such a good dump for the dangerous modifiers. Oh, the fire helmet. Hmm. Sorrow? No. No, this is the gloves. Herminor's Resolve? Herminor's Resolve, okay. I really do like Herminor's Resolve, though, because of it giving you kill and freeze immunity. Plus, it's just generally a all-around good helmet for fire builds. Technically, you could put Flame Dash on anything and just use that frequently, but... Actually, it's a fire scale, so you could use some ability. I mean, that wouldn't be useful. In general. I guess if you're turning Righteous Fire on and off frequently, then that might count. Maybe. It makes me wonder, if you turn Righteous Fire on when you have Chaos Inoculation, it just turns off immediately, I think. If it actually properly turns on, and then turns off, you could theoretically put it into Automation, have it just, like, turning off and on frequently, and that just keeping up Primitive's Resolve forever. Just a thought. Don't know if it actually works that way, though. Ah. Yeah, you blasts. Oh, no, no. No. No, not life to minions. No one wants that. Minion builds don't want that. The rest of us certainly don't. Let. Flat life regen is not good for, or flat life recovery is not good for minions. If your golem has 60,000 health, a, a 2,000 health flask is not going to help it. Even if it's at 150% of its value, so 3,000. I wonder what would make it that modifier useful. How many percent would you have to actually increase it by for it to be good? I put the most dangerous thing on the 
thing that is heavily reduced. I feel like what I'm trying to think what the percent would have to be for it to be worth it to make the minions gain percent of the of life per second from flask or recover like percent life per second from flask like let's say that you have a really really like, perfectly rolled flask, and you have 4,000 life recovery on it. If you get 200%, that's 8,000 life recovery. That's not very much for, like, the tankier monsters, the tankier minions you could have. And those ones are usually the ones where, like, if they're suffering, you want to be able to hit a, a button and help with it. I feel like maybe 500 to 1,000 percent would help. Because 500 percent of 4,000... Wait... Oh, wait, okay, okay, my brain got fucked up for a second. So 500% would be five times. So that would be 20,000 life recovered on your minions. Which is okay for golem builds. Like, that's not terrible. That's... I think that's almost usable. Ooh, timeless... All splinters, nice. I think a scaling modifier between 600 and 1200 uh, percent minions recover uh, life based on the flask would be worth it. And also add a modifier where it's just this flask doesn't affect you. This flask doesn't affect you, and the flask effect is not removed on full life, so that you can use it at any time, and it will not stop just because you aren't. Your life is full. That would make it a good modifier, I think. Because there's definitely times where, like, you're struggling with a uh, good specter and it's just it's just not having it it's found something that's really dangerous to it and that can help but there's also the fact that most of the time when you encounter those things it's something freak that you're not really expecting to be there which means that you're probably not going to see it coming and it's probably going to hit you hard enough that your your thing will die. Your specter or your golem will die before you even get the chance to use it for anything. So recovery doesn't matter so much in that scenario. 39. Just because you won't have enough time to actually react. Oh, maybe if you had a, like, minions recover 10% of life per second during Flask Effect. And then put that on Utility Flask specifically. So when your Flasks are active, they're, they're also regenerating life. That might be kind of fun. I don't know if that's going to be a worthy modifier, but it might.
I wonder what tier this map is going to be. If this is based on your highest tier map, then I need to keep doing maps. Before I pick it. Frenzy charges! Yay, I have four and four now. Four frenzy for power. Okay. Did I finish this? Yes, I finished layer. What's next? And this makes a Vol Pyramid map. Cool. Let's see the Vol Pyramid. Uh, whoops, what am I do? Totems, totems is an issue. Maim and Hinder are, eh. I don't, I'm not too worried about them. And then Chilled Ground is just annoying. This is the highest pack density and highest pack size. I'll give the lowest pack size one the flash charges. But I mean, these technically should already have a chance to freeze. I'll put it on the constructs. I can hopefully knock them out before I have a problem. Wait, what are... Quite a few embers here. Is there anything I can... Is there anything I can use to neutralize the freeze effect? Hmm. Frostmage Gemling. You know what? I'm going to do this. And since they already have a chance to freeze, this isn't as big a deal. Okay, hopefully this is doable. I didn't want to put the freeze on the porcupines because I swear there's no way I'm going to avoid every quill. And if every quill can freeze, ugh. That sounds like hell. Ooh, corpse. Oh my gosh. Okay, having Maim and Hinder on you at the same time sucks. Ah! Gemling Frost Mage! Okay. That would have been more scary if I had less damage. Or if this was a high tier. That was not high enough. It's not high enough of a tier to be that scary. I don't think. I mean, I'm still doing level 71 maps, and I'm already at 79, so... Not that my level, like, has any relation to the le the area level, really. Not past the campaign. Oh! There's a gemling. The good thing is, even after I cast my attack... 
the mines go off on their own, so even if I'm frozen, I don't have to worry that much. I can't keep attacking because I'm frozen, but otherwise not that bad. I can still kill things while frozen. So I do really want to get antifreeze going. I should check who I need to kill for that. What do I need to kill for that? I need to kill in the Sar Line of the Seas, which is another name for the Brian King. So probably Reef. Yeah, I, I haven't unlocked. It must be a higher level map. I guess that is not, not. I guess that's not too surprising. What am I using right now? Oh yeah, Blurs isn't as useful outside of the outside of the uh, labyrinth. I want to swap to Lunaris actually for now until. I've upgraded Brian King, and then I'm going to use that. I mean, all these quality gems are really nice. Whoa! Why do I suddenly have a lot of movement speed? Oh, I activated the Quicksilver, that's why. My brain was like, oh yes, Quicksilver time. Oh, so we're getting a lot of gemlings. I love it. So many quality gems. Very convenient. Should I... Yeah, okay. I do I since I do have the gemlings on here, I want to make sure that there's none that I'm missing. Ooh, nice. Got a really good roll on the flask there. Let's see it in a second. Oh, 18% dread banner, that's nice. I got an increased recovery rate, uh uh corrupted blood one. Or, wait, no, not that one. Uh yes. Sorry, increased re wait. No, I need to actually have it in my inventory. It really helps to have it in my inventory. I increased the recovery on Mount Corrupted Blood One, which I assume they're using for a poisonous concoction. How much is petrified blood? Not really worth much. Red banner. Level 1, 18%. We'll go 4 or 5C. Should level that one up then. Chains, not worth a huge amount. Scorching rays, probably not worth a huge amount. Fine iron, not worth a huge amount. Okay. Level both of these then. So I can always I can always change them into different gems in the labyrinth. And the Armic Guardian too as well. 
Oh, we're actually starting to get, like, a notable amount of chaos now. It's really nice. The most chaos I've had this league. No, that is four times the most chaos I've had this league. That's nice. I've skipped some of my usual playing the market stuff that I would do, just because I haven't really found it to be needed. It really helps that this build is so damn cheap. I I am still flabbergasted that I managed to make a 4-ish million DPS build for under 100c. That was that was an interesting. I'm 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 still very happy with that. Yeah, if I can get up to, I think, like, 120-ish Chaos, I'll be able to get the Advanced Versions Chestplate, which is the Victario's Influence. I think. My brain keeps saying Victario's Veracity. That's, that's not right. Is that right? No, it is Victario's Influence. Okay. Victoria's influence is a, such a good chest plate. Zoom. Increased effect. Rot gut is so nice. The sixty percent increased effect on forty percent increased movement speed, plus an extra twenty percent movement speed after the fact from the onslaught. So good. That's at least in eighty percent increased movement speed. Plus, I use. Frenzy charges a whole shit ton, so that means that I have, like, maximum increased duration. Pretty good. Probably gonna redo my passive tree at some point. But for now, I'm just going to be using the boring version, which is just the basic stuff that I always do. So, extra strong boxes, extra shrines, lots of heist. I'll be specializing it later. Ooh. Spawning a shrine on death sounds nice. Hmm. I don't think the solar elementals are going to have physical damage, so the increased lightning damage isn't a problem. Plus, they do have fire damage. You need to kill the entire pack to spawn the shrine. So I want the smallest pack size. Increase attack speed and cast speed. Uh, these charge, so increase attack speed on that would mean that they would be increased speed charge. So no, this will be fine. Want anything else? I can't do Wildwood yet. It's too dangerous. Actually, I could do Order of the Chalice, because that's a very small number of things that I'm going to be killing, so, yeah.
I love fields. Such a simple, easy map. Eh. Runic shit. Shrine. Om nom 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 shrine. Om nom 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 more shrine. Om nom nom extra shrine. <laughs> it's a good thing I got increased shrine effect before this, that's great. <laughs> Really convenient, actually. I need to not let the solar elementals punch me. That, that might actually have increased lightning damage. Actually, I'm still I'm still in white maps. It doesn't matter. Not for this build. I have all my defensive ascendancies immediately, so... We should really do our... our trial. Trial? No. Yes? No. Labyrinth. That's the word. Oh, I want... I want to regen. Thank you. Okay, you are dangerous. What are you? Oh no! Influenced extra chaos damage. Haste. Oh, oh, oh! So <laughs> divine shrine. I'm immune now. <laughs> That's a perfect time. Complete immunity to damage. Yay! That's the perfect time to go into here. Oh shit! That just deleted my shrine, didn't it? I forgot this is technically a separate zone. No! No, my my shrine effect. No. Sad. Very sad. That's totally my fault too. I can't even I can't even blame anything and that on anyone else either. Like that's totally my fault. Uh, I don't know why I always forget that. Scarabs. Give me more shrine. Shrine me, baby. Ooh. Minimum socket links. Up to five. That's nice. I will have use for that. Oh my gosh, so many things running at me. I know there's a spirit just off screen that's touching things. Which is why they're all running at me like that. Which is great, because it's probably adding some sort of benefit. I don't actually know what benefit the Tormented Spirits give by default, but... Like they all have different abilities, but I don't know what like like the good side is to it. Unless some of them just suck, and then that sucks. And trying. No. Trying. No. Ah. No. Not apparition. Stop that. Step it. And trying. And trying. And cash. And Huck. Hello, Huck. We are abusing dead people. Come join. I'm not sure I'm still picking up portal scrolls, because I'm honestly... 
If they're not too expensive, I, I might just use Portal Scrolls for the last, rest of the league, because there's no cast time on them, unlike Portal Gems. And they're not taking up a gem slot. Ooh, Fusion Boots, nice. Unlike the Portal Gem, which also takes up a gem slot, yeah. Which sucks. So fuck that. Oh! Oh! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That turned out well. Sixty-four percent alley elemental resistances. I guess if you include the uh, chaos res, it's seventy-eight percent. Oh, the plus seven to max life sucks, though. Oops. That would be really good if it wasn't a plus seven to max life. <laughs> that sucks. Oh my gosh, and that actually has the ability to be a tri res too, and both the resistances roll maximum. Actually, no, it is the, the ability to be a quad res, not a tri res. Seventy-five, seventy-eight, ninety-eight, hundred and two, hundred and twelve percent resistances on that. Uh, the life just really fucks it. So bad. Out of curiosity, by this, uh, these these boots might be good. I it's hard to tell. If it, the life really really sucks, though, if you are going evasion, yes, that's this is actually amazing. If you're like an evasion witch or something. Ooh, brute force one. That's exciting. That means we'll be able to do our other uh, blueprint. Increased cast speed on a, on a solar blast is good. I just wish it was a higher tier because it goes up to sixteen percent. Mmm, that didn't roll well. I mean, they're not bad. Might be able to get one C from it, I don't know. This one's too good because it recovers. And, uh, wait, this is an item level 72 to an item level 63. Yeah, I'll swap it. <clears throat> I need to actually like buy decent item level flasks so I can put instilling orbs on them. Actually automate them. Actually, let's go do the blueprint. Well, okay. Let's go do the contract, then the blueprint. Tips. Ah, tips. Ah. Can I do this is only with tips, okay. 
I mean, I might as well do that one. I'll just do the... I'll do the hack one after. And we get to beat up slavers. Nothing better than beating up shit-tier human beings. Well, actually, I'm a pacifist, but, like... <laughs> The desire is there. Back it. Yeah, it's back. Ooh, a perfect fossil. Is this one of the leagues where that's actually valuable? Tenzi! Ooh, should I leave the... <laughs> no, I'm not like... If I was likely to die, I would just leave the heist right now. So I could keep that for sure. Because I can just get more of these as many times as I want. Like this particular quest. Because it'll just keep spawning. As long as I haven't done it. I'm certainly going to keep opening smugglers' caches because I want my hook in my maps. Even if he isn't incredibly useful yet. Need a madame heist gear for him. Is that easy to get to? Yes, okay. Francis? Princess books? Okay. I think my brain was like, Rensis cooks, that makes sense. No, census books. <laughs> Who taught you how to words? Because they fail. They feel word. Oh god, word hard. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I'm gonna murder you, nya. Yeah. And other cat-related things. Yeah, and all that. So many. Yeah, no, just keep just keep walking into the XP grinder, will you? Uh oh. Oh god. That is a re warm reception. If I've ever seen one. So many rares. No. I'm partially like stopping to kill things so I can get XP as well. He'll return the thing to Tibbs. Here you go. No. Here you go. No. Here you go. There we go.
Hello. Light blink delivery. Thank you. It's it's cash on delivery. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now I'm just going to live in your house for a short amount of time. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just imagining a scenario where you just suddenly take over someone's house. Like, yeah, this house is mine now. My hideout. I see you wandered into my trap hideout. That reminds me of, uh, there's a bot trapping video online where uh, someone, there's currency bots that are like automatically, when you list something for trade, they uh, they automatically send you a message like, hey, trade with me. And the person was just inviting them to their hideout, like they listed something like obscenely low, and just kept inviting the bots to the hideout. And the bots didn't understand what to do because they refused to trade with the bots. So the bots just sat there and like just on the waypoint piling up. <laughs> Very funny video. And like on occasion you see like a real person would pop up and they'd be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Because any rational person would be like, something crazy's happening, because there's 50 people in your hideout, but... But the bots are just bots, so they don't know any better. All they know is to go to your hideout and trade with you, and if you don't trade with them, then what are they gonna do? They're not necessarily, like, incredibly intelligent. I mean, the more intelligent a bot is, the harder it is to code. And maintain. I mean, I mean that's just true for any program. It's the, the bigger a program is, the harder it is to maintain, the harder it is to upgrade. And if changes happen on the platform, like in the case of a bot where you're tr basically subverting the TOS, then that makes it even harder to maintain. And I do not advocate for the use of bots. I will, will just want to make that very clear. But it is very funny to see them pile up like that. <laughs> I'll take that. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't do that. This is like every modify you don't want on an item. Unidentified corrupted contraband. <laughs> no, what would be worse would be Corrupted and mirrored. Because the dangerous thing about the contraband items is that they drop on death. Which is why things are listed as contraband until you get out of the instance. Because if you die on the way back, then you lose the items that you, that you got. Scum Screech the Psychotic. That is a name and a half. Hmm. 
No. Bad tormentor. Bad. Um. Bet Harry there. I mean, I am stopping to kill things, but it's kind of my fault that things are getting, that uh, things are building up. Uh, nope. Don't like that. Yay. Leveling up Huck. Okay, more evasion rating, and then I get another frenzy charge at level eighty-one. T. Ips. No. Ah. Oh, Hawk was the one I was looking for. Yeah, well, it's not gonna work. Nope, they both suck. Here is your friend's charm. I am sorry. I noticed that this game has a feel to it that... Okay, I've been, like, full disclosure, I've been playing uh, Fallout 76 lately, and something that is very common in that game is... If someone's like, hey, I need to go find this person, haven't seen them in a while, it's like, oh, okay, I will bring you back their corpse. Because <laughs> they are dead. And this game also does that, where it's like... Oh, hey, I want to find out what happened, to, or Huck's like, hey, I want to find out what happened to my, uh, to my friend. Uh, can you help me find him? And then it's like, oh, yes, here are his dog tags. And Wakano's like, hey, I'm trying to figure out what happened to my, to my comrade. And I'm like, here is his necklace. <laughs> uh. Not. It sucks. <laughs> I just want people to, like, come back alive. That'd be nice. Nice little change of pace, you might say. Hmm. Do I want to level up? Like, I want to have a bunch of people leveling up at once. I don't know if you can level up multiple skills at the same time. Maybe you can? I don't know. I'll level up tips there. I'm already leveling up Vendaria, so I'm gonna level up Talina to level two. Uh, brute force is Huck over here, so I'll do brute force with Tibbs to finish him off, and then Gianna to level her up. Actually, do I want Niles? I want Niles actually, because Gianna I can level up by doing deception contracts, which will be good for me for the reveals and stuff. Hmm. I think my manager is suggesting that I take a break. So we, before we do our, our blueprints, we're going to go on a short intermission. And we will be coming back in, I don't know, about 10 minutes. 
So I will see you all momentarily. Hello, hello, and we're back. Okay, so. Is this a four wing? No, it's three wing. Okay. It is time to blueprint. Oh my gosh. My manager has words for me, apparently. What's going on? Ah, it's because I brought a snack with me. And she's like, but that's for me, right? No, it's not. There is nothing to eat here. Your eyes have deceived you. I don't know, I have nothing for you. I'm sure you can hear her cute little pug howls in the back. No, no. Oh my gosh. She's like, I smell chicken. How dare you have chicken without me? Don't you know everything you have is mine? She says. And I mean, yeah, but like, no? Or delirium scarab, nice. Feel like there didn't used to be delirium scarabs, that's kinda cool. That was a weird end of the song. Oh good, I need more augmentations. Hmm. Got a tap root. I don't really want to Hmm. Wait, I can I can open two chests after lockdown. One from Tibbs, one from Niles. Okay, so I don't actually need to worry about waking but waking? About opening that. Ow. No leaf slamming me. Not without permission, at least. Okay, so replica lion eyes pause. A replica inyas, which is really good. Replica salicine. 
Purple cut, another replica, line eyes, paws, and a staff. Hmm, no. Yeah, it's gonna be the Inyos. As someone who's used Replicate Inyos in a number of builds, I know it is valuable. So I had to pay for it. Tends to be not as valuable as the normal Inya's Epiphany because Inya's Epiphany is easier to do use without any investment than Replicate Inya's, but Replicate Inya's is more powerful when you invest into it. Because you need to be able to maintain at least six power charges to have the same power as just a normal uh, pair of boots. At least five. And you need to be able to maintain them reliably, so having minimum charges is valuable. Like, my builds where I have 10 plus power charges, yeah, it's pretty easy to maintain the movement speed boost and such. Lockpick, nice. Now to finally open the chest. Nothing good. Just elk shards. Man, I'm terrified to use my uh, righteous fire. It's just so dangerous. Okay. If I'm already attacking, so I already have my 10% regen, it helps a lot. It doesn't last very long, so... Kinda... Kinda sucks. Oh, March of Legion, nice. That can be valuable, depending on if I get enough plus aura on it. No. No, you're gonna have to wait. Oh my gosh. Also, low ups on everyone. Someone needs to go to bed. Who is that that needs to go to bed? I'll be right back.
Okay. Now we can do the other wing. In her old age, she's become a bit rowdy. She's like, I'm old, you gotta listen to me, which means you give me all your chicken. <laughs> to which the answer is no. Hmm. I think those are price fixers. Okay. Oh, we rolled five plus five to aura gems. That's really good. Only a couple. Only a couple C. That's sad. Still, it's actually worth something, which is nice. Okay, with Golden Idol to turn in. You're actually decent. Just boost each of these how I can. I'm on my people. Uh, the next person I use much as Karst is... And Deary, who I can't add something to, so I guess Tibbs. And then Talina? Yeah, Talina. Hmm. I don't know if any of the cloaks effects matter when it comes to using Huck in maps. So, I'm just going to give this to someone random. Actually, I can give it to Huck, it's fine. And Cars can get some lockpicks. Now I put all the away all the stuff. Okay. Go back and we can do the last wing. Don't want to wait too long though, or the incidents might close because it sometimes does. It's not supposed to anymore, but it does sometimes. Cover my bases. Just be careful. So what do we have to open here? We have one extra thing to open. And we have four, maybe six chests to open. So if we open five before the end, before lockdown, we'll have everything. The most important things is the legion and the scarabs and then if we can open abyss chest we will incubator oh yeah i forgot incubators were legion Ooh, diviners that's good i think diviners are actually worth something no <laughs> I was... Oh, wait. These are contraband. I still can't apply them.
Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get the fifth chest. I think it's just going to be four chests before lockdown. Not a big deal. I'm only giving up the Abyss Jewels. That's not the worst loss. Ooh, it's a beer basalt flask. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, those take up a lot. Let's see, how much of these? I can do both of these. I got two resonators. Okay, that's worth it. How much are these worth? They're only worth they're less worth than less than a C each. Wow, that's kind of sad. Oh well. I can use them at least, so that that's fine. I will make them into money via crafting. The fact that I haven't gotten a single weapon so far, like heist weapon, is annoying. Ooh, replica heartbreaker. Ooh, that could be my first trinket. Is there something to unlock the trinket slot, or do I just have... No, I don't have it. How do I unlock the trinket slot? Usually there's, like, some thing for, to click for that. I don't see... I don't see anything to open my slot. Maybe I have to pick up a trinket for the first time to get it. Okay, Bones of Allure and Elopathy are not worth anything. Rep they're not. The mace is not worth anything, really. I don't think so. So it's between the Replica Heartbreaker and the Trinket. Additional div cards, additional sockets, additional rarity. That's that's decent. If the if the Heartbreaker isn't worth at least a couple C, I'm gonna go with the Trinket then. I don't think the heartbreak is worth very much either. Uh, oh, it perfect rolled spell damage. That makes it decent. Though it almost min-rolled energy shields. So that makes it less decent. <laughs> I mean... It's gotta be at least 4C. That's, that's... I think that's enough. Because... Hmm... All of these modifiers are decent. Well, okay, Harbinger sucks, but like... All of these modifiers are decent. But I could get, like, X drops as Y, and that's kind of the ones that I usually go for. Since those are more guaranteed currency. They're more reliable. Like, some of your augments drop as chromes or something. Or some of your alts drop as chaos. Like, it's way more reliable to get, especially when you're picking actual currency chests. This is... Okay, that was the fossil one. My gosh. No! No, 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 no! I didn't... No! No, I didn't want you to hit the chest. I wanted... 
people want Vindiri to do the thing. Oh, it's sad. Oh, the Abyss things aren't really worth a huge amount. I'm just... I mean, it can be sometimes, but not really. It's just sad. Sad. Oh, well. So we're getting lots of good progress, so... I guess I don't really have much to complain about. Not like I lost a currency or a div room. That would be way sadder. Since those are more reliable returns. I mean, Abyss Jewels can be... multiple div, but... A lot of time they can also be like multiple nothings. <laughs> Just like one elk doesn't sell. Uh oh, I'm going the wrong way. Yay, flask. Slightly better jade. Not incredibly good, but slightly better. Yes! Sharpening Stone! Yes! I can get at least a level 5 determination or on there. Yay, everyone's leveling up. Okay, is Huck high enough level to deal with this? Level 2, yeah, he should be able to do that. You good with this? Yeah, you can do that, okay. What am I not changing? Not changing my Marlins for a while. Not changing my boots for a while. Probably not changing my scepter for a while. Okay. Why do I have a scroll fragment? That's really unnerving. What did I just get a scroll fragment from? That means I turned in something I didn't want intend to turn in. Probably. That's not good. Hope that wasn't something valuable. That's all I can say. So I have the freeze and chill one. Nope! Neither of those modifiers are desirable for me. Okay, no, no cringe. Uh, increased armor. And this wouldn't be bad if I used armor, but I don't use armor, so it's not amazing. Critical strike chance, that's not bad. Hmm. Eh, I'll take it. If I can get a diamond flask with evasion on it now, then they can kind of swap between each other to be ideal. This is actually a pretty decent freeze and chill roll. Is that worth anything? Wait, no. Oh, price checker, what do you say? Two. Oh, whatever. They're going in there. Simple. Okay, well, now we need to get a determination aura on this. Well, shit. <laughs> and I know for sure that this is not high enough item level to get a little 15. So, that's ideal. That's really good. The only thing else that I could have would be, like, bonus damage. Bonus, bonus if it's fire. I mean, extra extra life regen's good. I have no problem with that. That's great. That's perfect. Okay. 
Cool. So in maps, I'll have a determination aura, extra life regen, and the uh, combat ready buff, which is twenty percent. Uh. Attack damage, attack speed, and movement speed, I think? No. Wait. I think it's... I think it's 20% attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. Which is... okay. I mean, attack and cast speed do nothing for me, but... I used to think that cast speed would affect my mind-throwing speed. Maybe it did. I don't think it does. Based on what Path of Building says. Or has been saying lately. We have made good money today. I'm glad we got that perfect boss. Well, that was a really nice pull. You know, we might be able to buy our Victoria's influence soon. What are we looking at for Victorios? Uh, we're looking at a div for Victorios. How much is a div right now? Uh, I want a div, and I pay chaos. How much? One seventy-three. Okay. I'm about halfway to my chest plate, then. That's fine. Or if I get a div to drop, then I get it immediately, but, you know. Actually... Let us go buy a Gift of the Goddess instead. That is what... That would be a good idea. Wait, no, not a Gift of the Goddess. Dear God, that's expensive. No. Offering to the Goddess. Oh, got a response in four. That's surprising. That's that's pretty good. Usually I have to do at least ten messages before I get a response from anyone. Because, like, the first set of people are are price fixers. Well, unless they're at least some t sometimes there's random people who are actually selling things for cheap, but generally they're price fixers. Okay. We're more than capable of doing this. Might as well do it while we have the time. Because it'll just give us an extra bit of punch. Okay, so we need the POE Labs site. Let's see, what is our labyrinth looking like today? The fuck? That is the weirdest labyrinth I've ever seen. That's the Uber Lab? That's the fucking Uber Lab? What? Okay, no, I'm gonna I have to show y'all what the what the Uber Lab looks like right now. That's Oh my god, it's real. Okay, that's really fucking weird. Uh, okay, where is it? Where is it? Uh, Chrome, 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 Chrome. 
This is what the Uber Lab looks like today. It's an entirely straight line. Almost entirely. That's really, really weird for the Uber Lab. Usually it looks like crazy. Like, it's usually a mess of, of different directions and stuff. It doesn't usually go straight like that. That's really weird. Well, okay, whatever. Okay, so... Uh, we have a... Is that a gold key or a silver key on the first area? Are we in a silver or gold? Okay, silver key. Okay. So top right, we have uh, our one and only exit to this area. Not even a gold key to open the first area, either. That's really weird. Okay, so the thing should be directly here. Yep. God, that's so weird. Okay, so this next one is Argus. Uh... I need to go top right as well, but I'm going to grab uh, Argus 2, because it'll be simple. Oh, that... I didn't expect this to be his room, because that was quite a small of a door. Okay. Got my key. Oh my gosh, I just had an amazing idea. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, I really want to add a... Uh, a sound for when people follow. Not just, like, the basic shit, because, I mean, I want something personalized to the channel. Kind of. I could clip... The ba Bannon's What in damnation have you done for as a follow sound? <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be so good! Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So we are going to the top left. Let's a tormented whale lord for a second. I'm like, oh, come on. Okay, I think this is a hook. Out. Yeah, okay, this is a hook shape. So, I go up and around over here. And, yeah, left side. Okay, so after some trial. First Uber Lab trial of the league. Okay, I'm going to turn off my automation. Stack up my mines. And automation. I just had a horrifying thought. There is always the potential that that path of building 
there's an error in it, or the game, there's an error in it, and Pyroclast Mine of Sabotage is not actually as strong as it seems. But no, I, I don't, I've played enough of it to know that it's definitely going to be strong, and like, I can forecast that. That it should be good shit. Not that way. Yeah, no, I guess that's not actually reasonable. Okay. Maybe I'm worrying too much. Generally, I don't have too many issues where I think something's going to work, and then mathematically it fails. Usually some sort of problem has happened in that scenario where I've, I've just missed something. And that's different. That's different than, like, there being a problem with the game or a problem with path of building. And I'm past the point of knowing that, yeah, no, this is... This build is going to be good. And I mean... I'm doing Uber Lab, and it doesn't really feel like much, so... I think that's proof enough that this is a good build. Wait, what? Oh, fuck, that's weird. I have Brutal Shrine, so I have Knockback. I was just like, why? Why Knockback? What What do? Ooh, 81. Nice. Feels weird having Knockback. Okay, what can I give myself? Oh! Yes! Fifth Frenzy Charge! Oh, I sh I didn't... Wait. In the final version of the build, I'm going to be using a rare helmet. The normal rare helmet, right? Oh my gosh, I've been... I was so set on the concept of using a Eater slash uh, X-Arch thing that I didn't consider that... I could get a I could get a uh, corrupted uh, helmet with plus one to maximum power charges. Man. That brings up to five power charges. That's actually probably better. A lot better. Yeah, that could spike the damage of the build, actually. In the... At the end... In, like, the late, late... Uh... The upper end of the build. That could be kind of awesome. That's silly, because I usually... Do something like that, so the fact that I forgot it is... Odd. Okay, so I'm in the key area. Right? Yeah, okay. I just need to find the key. Okay. I got lost for a second, so where the hell am I on the map? I'm on the little penis outcropping. That's where I am. A little dingle dangle. Oh, I need to get the corner. Corner lever. Are there any more levers? Or am I good? No, nope, I'm good. But I find that the 
golden keys and the treasure keys are just like the lightest of palette swaps. <laughs> Like, they look almost the same. Beside each other. You usually don't have two to compare to each other, though. Oh, well, I just used the goat one. Oh, well. Okay. So, I'm in the silver door area. There is a dark shrine here. Which I want to get for, hopefully... Uh... The bonus. Uh, the bonus craft. That'd be really nice. Good money. And I have a bunch of gems that are ready to be turned into something. Nope. That was wrong. Let's try that again. I just walked right into it. Okay, there we go. Just need to focus every once in a while, just, just to make sure I don't die to traps, because I swear, the traps kill me way more than anything else. Oh shit, no. No, 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 no. We have a dark shrine to get. I already said this to myself, and then forgot. Let me remind myself that I have a dark shrine to get. Darn me. Hope it's not that corner down there. That'd be annoying. Mm, it's here. I see the edge of it. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't like this area. Hello, friends! Oh, no! Uh oh. Well, Diamond Shrine's good. I mean, that just assures my victory. There's, there's no point asking if someone wants to wait for a onesie item. <laughs> no, it just doesn't matter. Okay. Holy shit, there's four Dark Shrines in this lab today? This is, lab is weird in a number of ways. Oh, this is... this song's WTF. I recognize it because it's very WTF. <laughs> I'm just gonna change it. Okay. okay. Where am I going? The Dark Shrine's somewhere here. And a secret pathway. I don't know if I want to take the secret path, though, because that skips at least one Dark Shrine. I like Dark Shrines, though. They're very dark and shiny. I like shiny things. Dark Shrine. Is this the shortcut or the actual shrine? Or is the Dark Shrine just a shortcut? Nope, it is a real Dark Shrine. Nope, it is not. Wait. 
This skips ahead to the trial? Ah, fuck it. I don't like being in the lab anyways. <laughs> That's convenient, okay. Oh. Right. Traps. The thing I hate. Ew, traps. Who would want to use, like, a build that involves traps? Or mines, or anything like that. It's so weird. <laughs> no. No. Save me, mines! Save me! I curse your name in jest! <laughs> okay. Yay, stuff! Stuff is my favorite kind of stuff. Yay, final SNZ. Ooh, I got the mischievous hawker body armor. Cool, now I deal a bunch of extra damage. Time for the font. Hmm. So I can sacrifice a gem to gain a faster lens. Or I can add 30 mil to a gem. That probably wouldn't do a huge amount to my gem, admittedly, if it was my main skill. And it's probably the only thing I wanted, would want to do anyways. Oh, I... Hmm. That would save me 7c by using the quality on it. That would max it, which would get me an extra projectile. Wait, that gives me extra five extra projectiles every throw. What the fuck am I doing? Of course I'm doing that. That's super important. <laughs> That's a chunk of my damage. Okay. Okay, who shall we convert today? Uh, I think I'll pick a... Blue transfigured gem. Ooh, high school minus sabotage. Okay, the the counterpart to this one. Ooh, the skeleton mage one and cold snap of power. Oh, those are all very nice. Okay, which of these is the most valuable? That's actually kind of hard to say. Just based on how they're all probably valuable. High School Mine of Sabotage. Starts at 1C. Okay. I mean, a quality one's going to be higher than that, but that's not a good indication. Summon Skeleton of Mages. Starts at 5. An uncorrupted 20%. Well, uh, I need to actually look this up properly. Corrupted 20 is... Okay, you can get a 20-23 for 20C. What do you get for... Oh, okay, so the 3 doesn't do anything. So this is probably 19C once it's finished leveling. I mean, that's not bad. So I've yet to see an uncorrupted 20, something of it. A seventeen twenty uncorrupted is 30C, actually. Hold on. That means that this is going to be way more valuable once it hits. Oh yeah, there's a 1919 for 30. Okay, so this is, this is probably about 30C then. Yeah, this is probably what 30C as is. Or, especially when I level it up. 
And then cold snap power. How much is cold snap of power? Um, hmm. Okay. So a level nine. So a nineteen twenty is around twenty C as well. From the looks of it, there's a whole bunch of of these that are just like nineteen nineteens. Wait, there's a dip card that does that. That's why. Okay, I think there's an excess of cold snaps of power in the in the market, but summon mages uh, or summon skeletons of mages would probably be better because that's something people want to corrupt for an extra level. I don't know how valuable the extra level is, but probably enough that it's worth taking. So I'll take that. And that's a, now a fifteen twenty. Yeah, so twenty percent ones unleveled start at twenty C. Yeah, this will be at least fifty C by the time it's unleveling. Okay, that's gonna be really nice. Done. Okay, cool. Oh man. I'm glad that went so well. I have a nice little nest egg that's going to be slowly working till it finishes leveling. That's really nice. Hmm, what should we do? Might be worth it to call it for the night, because we have done a fuck ton. And that's... I think I think it's worth calling it there, because it's... It's definitely... Yeah. My brain is, like, so... So, uh, not working. Yeah, maybe that's a suggestion that I should probably call it a night then. <laughs> Before I get my character murdered for some reason. Has this character died? It probably has died while leveling, because I tend to be Yeah, I, I okay, I've died a bunch. Cause I tend to uh res run a lot when it comes to the early bosses like Mervel. Like I don't care how many times I die. I just I'll die to get my flash charges back, run back in, deal damage, die, run back in, deal damage, die. I don't really try to level up to the point where I can just take her normally. So I kind of get a lot of deaths. <laughs> I don't know what's a good amount of deaths by level 81, but Pretty happy with the gear I have right now, too. I mean, the implicits on none of my gear are useful. I mean, Max Lightning Res is bad. And the Shock really isn't useful, because I have Skitter Bots that are guaranteed Shock. Evasion rating is okay. And During Cry is not useful. I just need to get more embers and ichors, really. I have just a basic belt, some basic rings that came with defense mods. 
a kind of decent Amethyst Ring, and just my, my Marlene's. My next big damage boost is probably going to be getting Divine Judgment. Which is... I mean, that's going to require Gold Oil, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Wait, what? what's Divine Judgment? Oh, hold on a second. I think I split this to make it cheaper. Right, okay. Oh, Divine Judgment's over here. Oh, it's Sepia Teal Black. That's why I picked it, because that's really fucking good. And then I know Heart of Flame up here is a Gold Oil. Yeah, yeah, it's Teal Azure Golden. Yeah, that's very, that's way more expensive. And considering that you're trading 20% uh, elemental damage for... Or you're, you're trading 50% elemental damage for 30% fire damage and 6% fire pen, it's, it's not a huge difference, I don't think. Let's see, actually. Divine Judgment is okay ninety nine basically divine judgment is eighty percent of the DPS of heart of flame. So Heart of Flame is, like, a nice little boost to get, like, way later when you're just, opt like, doing the mini optimizations, but it's really not required. You can just go Divine Judgment and do Heart of Flame, like, last, basically. Focus on getting everything else first. I should probably pick up Pure Talent, though. Because that'll be useful. I currently just have this, which isn't honestly all that bad. I mean, attributes I've struggled with at times. Mind damage is good, area damage is good, and I do a little bit of... I do, like, a notable amount of cold damage. Uh, so you kind of see it there at the top. It looks like it's almost comparable to the fire. It's not, because if you look at the very bottom, uh, each mine adds X to X fire damage to hits. So it actually is a lot closer to... Like, 1,400 to 2,100 fire damage when I'm at my max, so. Yeah. But it's a tiny, tiny little boost. This is... It's nice to find something that's complete, like, a, a four... A four, uh... Uh... Explicit? Yes. A four explicit jewel that actually is, like, completely useful to a build. I don't remember whether I found this, or it was given to me by Pyro or Mod. I think he gave it to to me. For leveling. Well, if you gave this to me, Pyro, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> very, it's been very useful. This is definitely an, has an area... Yeah, of course it has an area tag. Okay. For some crazy for some crazy reason, I had to check <laughs> whether it had an area tag or not. But that's be I mean, that's pretty good damage. So now yeah, I'll have to compare that to the pure talent. Actually, let's see how does this compare to pure talent? It is a damage decrease. I guess that doesn't surprise me too much. It's actually pretty close to the same power as Pure Talent, come to think of it. Because it's... Its scale is about three quarters of the power of Pure Talent. Which means that... I don't... Actually, let's see. Do I, do I end up with a lot of, of cold damage? No, I end up with zero cold damage. Okay, so that's not going to be useful. So just with the mine damage and the area damage, 
it's already coming close to pure talent, which means that I might be able to put something else on there, like... I... I don't know... Poison Avoidance or something? Or Bleed Avoidance? Those are all good. And go for it that way. Though I can... If I get the right jewels... I can I can really add some stuff to this, so I don't know. I got got some ideas. If I could get a mind damage, fire damage, area damage, fuck, that'd be amazing. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it so much, as always. Thank you so much again to J Doc Jock for following the start of the stream. I very much appreciate you, and I appreciate all the rest of you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this stream will be going up in the next few days on at Black Cat Streams, and we'll be continuing to put up highlights five days a week on at Black Cat Studio. Follow the Twitch channel, subscribe to the YouTube channels, any of that if you want to see more content. And I will be seeing you at Thursday, this Thursday, two days from now, at 2 p.m. at PST, 5 p.m. EST. Thank you all so much for watching, and have the greatest of days.